Dear students, let's discuss about the Docks titration, which is a part of class 12 chemistry experiments. The titration that I'm going to discuss using this presentation is Mohr salt versus potassium permanganate. So experiment number one will have the aim to prepare 250 ml of M by 20, that is 1 by 20 standard solution of Mohr salt. Mohr salt is a double salt. It is ferrous ammonium sulfate. And then once we prepare the solution, we have to determine the molarity and strength of given KMnO4 solution by titrating it against the Mohr salt solution prepared. The apparatus required would be standard measuring flask. We have to make 250 ml. So standard measuring flask has to be 250 ml. If we have to make 100 ml accordingly, we'll take 100 ml flask. Weighing bottle, funnel, burette, pipette. Instead of pipette, another burette may also be taken. Test tube, conical flask, weight box, beakers, and then chemicals like Mohr salt crystals, dilute sulfuric acid, and KMnO4 solution. The theory behind the experiment is that this reaction between KMnO4 and Mohr salt, it's a redox reaction. KMnO4 is a very good oxidizing agent and Mohr salt is a reducing agent here. So KMnO4 is acting as a self indicator also in the titration. This is very important fact that in acidic medium, the color from dark pink changes to almost colorless as the uh, manganate, permanganate ions, MnO4 minus ions, which are pink in color, they are changing to Mn2 plus. So here the color change indicates itself that the reaction is complete. So we do not need any other indicator. The reagent is itself an indicator. So KMnO4 is the self indicator in these redox titrations. The molecular equation, KMnO4 reacts with Mohr salt in acidic medium. And it produces potassium sulfate, manganese sulfate, ferric sulfate, and along with that, ammonium sulfate. This is the molecular equation because we are representing all the reactants and products in the form of their molecules. And the same thing can be represented in ionic equations form also. Half reactions you can see here. MnO4 minus is changing to Mn2 plus. It involves five electrons and acidic medium is there. And from Mohr salt, Fe2 plus is changing to Fe3 plus. And it is uh, uh, involving loss of one electron. So we need to multiply the equation by five. This is how we balance redox reactions. And then this is the complete redox reaction which has taken place. The calculations involved with the uh, first step, that is preparation of solution are shown here on this slide. So everything which is written in blue color in the presentation should be written on the ruled side, right hand side pages. And those which are with red color should be on the unruled one, the plain side, which is on the left side. So the calculations involved, if I have to make 1 by 20 molarity per mohar salt, which has molar mass 392 grams per mole, then I need a particular number of moles. And molarity, if I'm talking about, that is per liter. So, but I'm making 250 ml. So, here I have to convert this to 50 ml into liters. And this is how we do the calculation because molarity is number of moles. We don't know how much solute we require. That is what we are calculating. So, the weight of solute required divided by molar mass will be number of moles of Mohr salt divided by the volume in liters. And when you put all the values and rearrange the equation to solve, it will give you the answer 4.9 grams. But suppose you have to make some other molarity, maybe 1 by 40, 250 ml only. The uh, value will definitely change here. Accordingly, you can do the calculation. Same way, if I have to make 1 by 20 molarity only, but I need only 100 ml. I need to make just 100 ml. So here, instead of 250, I will take 100. So these are simple calculations that you have done in theory also that uh, relates the weight of solute with molarity. So that is very easy to do. In this particular titration, we are making 1 by 20 molarity and 250 ml of the solution. So I need 4.9 grams. Now in the procedure, you will see that we need a weighing bottle. It's a small bottle 
with a particular weight. So you have to take a clean dry weighing bottle and add calculated weight to the pan containing calculated weight in this case is 4.9 grams for the weighing bottle. Now keep adding more salt to the weighing bottle till the weight in the pan is balanced with the weight of the weighing bottle plus more salt. Like suppose the weight of the weighing bottle is some X grams. 16 grams or 17 grams something like that plus I need 4.9 grams of more salt so that will be the total weight which I have to balance with the weights I am using using the weight box and fractional weights so that procedure can be done and understood properly in the lab only so this is for the first part this weighing part for making the solution 1 by 20 molarity 250 ml and then we have to transfer this uh, salt that we have weighed to the standard measuring flask it's a flask with long uh, neck then add one test tube that is dilute sulfuric acid to it so that the mohar salt does not get hydrolyzed and then approximately 100 ml of water to it so that you have space for shaking the solution vigorously mixing the contents properly and after that you can make the volume up to 250 ml how do you know the volume is 250 ml there is a mark on the neck of that measuring flask which tells you that if you fill till here it is exactly 250 so in the beginning do not make it 250 add lesser quantity 100 ml or so of water after adding the acid and then mix the contents properly and then dilute it to get 250 ml then you wash the puree with water and rinse it with kmno4 for the second part of the titration and fill the puree with kmno4 and clamp it you have to note down the initial reading upper meniscus in this case because this is a colored solution you will not be able to see the lower meniscus then wash the pipette or the second puree that you are taking with water and then uh, pip it out 10 ml mohar salt standard solution in the conical flask which is to be done using pipette or you can take another burette which can be uh, washed and rinsed with mohar salt solution and then fill it with the solution and use it add one test tube dilute sulfuric acid to the conical flask once you have taken 10 ml of mohar salt solution in the conical flask add one test tube of dilute sulfuric acid then run down the solution slowly from the burette to the conical flask till the color of the solution changes to very light pink very light pink means when kmno4 is just extra and the reaction has completed the color pink will appear when the reaction is complete and we have reached the end point and then more kmno4 is not reacting so we will get the pink color note down the final reading of the burette then find out the volume by subtracting initial reading from the final reading like you started with zero and you are getting your value around five or maybe around 10 so the final reading 10 minus initial reading zero so 10 ml if final reading is five initial would be zero five minus zero five so by finding out the difference you will find what is the volume of the kmno4 which we need for final calculation then repeat the experiment to get the concordant readings same readings this is the observation table which is to be drawn on the left hand side unruled page just opposite to the procedure and then a uh, volume of more salt solution for every set you are taking 10 ml so 10 is written here initial reading of the period would be uh, zero and then after that whatever uh, is the final reading that you are getting here you have to suppose you are getting five okay so you have to subtract zero from five volume will be five next reading initial will be 5 if final is 5 here for the first for second initial would be 5 you do not have to fill the burette again and again till 0 and then suppose here you are getting 10 so 10 minus 5 would be 5 i have got concordant reading so at least try at least carry out three sets do not leave it here three sets at least and when you get two concordant readings you are sure that you are right you are working properly now suppose the concordant reading in this case is 5 it may be 5.1, 4.9, depending upon the strength of the solutions, depending upon how you carry out the experiment carefully, uh, depending upon the strength of the solution. I was saying it may be 10, it may be something different also. Right now, we don't know what will be the reading. So that you will come to know when you actually do it in the lab. And then calculations, they, uh, these will be done just below the table. 
on the unruled side only. So here you have molarity and volume of KMnO4 divided by 2 equal to molarity and volume of mod salt divided by 10. These are the n factors. If you see the equation carefully, 2 moles of KMnO4 react with 10 moles of mod salt. So these factors are taken here. And then you rearrange the equation, this equation, to get molarity of KMnO4. Then you put the values here, like mod salt, uh, we made 1 by 20. So in place of molarity of mod salt, I can write 1 by 20. Volume of mohar salt, every time we were taking 10 ml. So I'll write 10 here. And this is the factor 2 that we are considering. Then 10 divided by 10 into volume of KMnO4. Whatever is the concordant reading. In this case, I wrote 5. So suppose I get 5. So this is my concordant reading. I'll write this in place of volume of KMnO4. Then I solve it. I will be getting the molarity of KMnO4 here. Once you get the molarity here, you have to multiply that molarity by 158 grams, which is the molar mass of KMnO4 to get the strength in grams per liter. Now the result, according to the aim that we wrote, A part, 450 ml of M by 20 mohar salt standard solution is prepared and used to determine the molarity and strength of given KMnO4 solution. B part, the molarity and strength of KMnO4 solution that we have calculated are to be filled here. Precautions, there should be no air bubbles in the burette. You have to be very careful. If you notice any air bubbles, just run the solution and then air bubble will go. And solution from the burette should be added in drops and should not be very fast. Always read the upper meniscus in case of colored solution because lower will not be visible to you and lower in case of colorless. Titration plus should not be rinsed every time. Otherwise, you might leave some uh, uh, water there which may dilute the solution and you will never get the concordant reading. So, these are some of the precautions we need to take care of. That is all about this first titration. Thank you.